software is for, how it works in principle. And then Miguel Santander will show how the molecular radiation transfer works, or how it's used, and then what you can do with it. Uh, so, for those of you who have seen the software before, this is new, this is the startup page, which is a desktop, which is that's interactive. You can see the different modules that are used in shape for different purposes, the 3D module, graphs, animation, math, physics, maps, so on, listed here. You can click on them and then it goes right to, to the module, or you can drag them up to the toolbox up here, or the toolbar, so you don't have all of them all the time. Uh, makes it easier to work with. And then and you start working. Okay. So the basic idea of Shape is to make uh, 3D morphokinematical modeling. That was the original idea, at least. So you construct interactively in the 3D module your objects that can have basically any structure. Yes. So you don't have to define analytically or semi-analytically your structures being uh, committed to an analytical formulae or something. You have an interactive tool based on meshes that you can manipulate in many ways. There are tools in here that help you make basically any structure you want. And uh, you also define the density distribution. There are different tools for that too. Velocity and all that you need for a, a morphological description of an object. And then, then you go on to the render module where you, that mesh information and all that you gave the model is turned into an image and a spectrum or a PV diagram. This is a spectrum. Here's position, velocity, no, here's wavelength that is uh, corresponds to this slit that is painted on the image. Here we have a dust transfer where we have the scattering of light from the center star of this object on the, the dust structure that we have set up in the 3D module. Here we can see, for example, all the colors and the inner part here, this dense part that is optically thick, is much redder than the other parts where the light is scattered in the optical thin <coughs> Okay, this something new also is the hyperdynamics module. So you can actually do dynamics. You can go way beyond uh, the morphokinematic modeling that we used to have. This is only very recent. You have an interactive display where you can have different windows showing density, like here, this is a supernova explosion. And here's temperature. Here's a little thick, dense knot that is being overrun by the shot. You have uh, this window is actually interactive. You have volumetric rendering interactively. You can rotate this object and look at it from any angle instantaneously while the software is running, while the simulation, while the simulation is still running. Here are the controls for the uh, hydrodynamics. And the initial and uh, boundary conditions are also set up in the 3D view as you do any other simulation. You, know, you, you put your ambient medium, your jets or supernova explosion in a 3D module and here it is run. And then you can go back again and visualize the results as any other object. You can put emission lines or whatever you want and calculate uh, radiation transfer on them. Here are a few examples of bipolar nebula that we calculated and then visualized the usual way in shape. You can filter where temperature is high or velocities are high and then just visualize those parts. Compute any other diagnostic that you want, uh, like PV diagrams or, or channel maps. Something new also is you can generate uh, magnetic field structures and gravitational field structures of any distributions in 3D. This is was done for calculation of radiation around compact objects like neutron stars or so, where gravitational field is very high and magnetic fields are high and have an influence on the line shapes. So you can do a disk, a parent disk, and, and see the 
relativistic, uh, in the relativistic uh, beaming part of the emission that comes through with this. You can visualize these fields using these field lines and vectors. You can do that also with the normal uh, velocity distribution that you might have for other objects. Now, the powerful new tool that the existing users might want to use is that you can now apply structures based on images that you load into shape that you have taken from actual observations or that you have drawn in an external program like GIMP you can really make very complex structures now which are then projected on the mesh and the mesh takes the structure that is deformed according to what you have on the image you can draw this in GIMP click on export and it automatically loads the, the image and this changes the structure so it's quite efficient uh, to work with this is a, an image for visualization this is the model for Eta Carina that I'm working on you can actually put several light sources around it several light sources, this is just for visualization to see the structure even more easily and then scatter it off the dense dust structure that you just put there for, for show basically or to, for visualization and then visualize it and I wonder if it's moving works. Oh no, this is PDF, forget it. It's not clear, just Okay, okay this is just for looking at the object in a better way so you can appreciate it more easily Instead of illuminating it from the center, you put lights around it and see the shadows in it. Now, here is a uh, famous ring nebula. I'm working on a model for planetary representation, which then maybe we can also use for, for science. Uh, here is the observation, and this is the model so far. You might appreciate these dark spots everywhere. It's not very well represented here. This is a little star and some details of the edges here, which are at their correspondence in the observations. So you can see how complex your models can now get using these uh, applications where you take these structures from the actual images and then put them into shape and project them on, on the mesh structure. You can do this also for the density, not only for, for deforming the mesh. Right? And then you can do all your computations as usual. So you can get highly complex structures. Now, <coughs> we want to collaborate more and more. There's a demand, say, for 3D volumetric models for planetariums. There are now systems there that uh, take 3D volume structures and rotate them in real time for presentations in a planetary, in a digital planetary. So these two companies asked us to uh, do such models. And this is the first one I did for our Milky Way. They wanted a Milky Way model. And so this is a 3D model of our Milky Way made in shape with all the radiation transfer in three channels. There's dust in it, the stars, the bulge, and H2 regions aren't very easily visible. But you see in highly detailed structures you can do now with the high, high, uh, high definition renderer. And if you combine images from different views, you can do things like that. You can put a real image of the stellar background on top of three different views of the same galaxy, our galaxy, and produce quite convincing representations of the objects. Okay, now Miguel will show uh, what you can do for molecules. Give you a, a very brief presentation. 
demonstration of Sigmol. Sigmol is a plugin for, for Shape, version 5, um, which enables Shape to, to work in, to do radiative transfer in molecular species, specifically CO, uh, rotational lines from J10 uh, to 1716 in 12 CO and 13 CO. And it's based on regenerated tables of the absorption and emission coefficients uh, because uh, the, the problem is that the, the absorption and emission coefficients in the molecules in CO are uh, completely non-trivially dependent on, on the density and on uh, the temperature. Uh, so one, one generates uh, tables for different sets of densities, temperatures, abundances and sets of uh, sizes and velocities, then uh, one can download that mm, from the Shape web page and put it in the directory, tell Shape where it is, and uh, uh, start more. Uh, this is a test case, it's a pilot study we did uh, last year with NTC 1727, uh, in which we model the, the molecular envelope of this nebula as several uh, shells, concentric shells, with uh, two polar rods, different uh, parameters, and then uh, well, as, uh, this uh, was presented by Valentin, so uh, I, I won't go deeper into that. This is the, the reference of what this is. This would be, for now, the reference uh, which should be used if you use shape mold. Uh, we are preparing a more detailed uh, paper on, on, on the subject. Uh, this is what, this is the, the several fits to different transitions of uh, 12 CO and 13 CO. The, the idea is that uh, shape mold, uh, using, using shape plus shape mold, uh, allows you to very easily uh, change the morphology uh, and the velocity field of the, of the nebula and very quickly uh, have a, a good idea of the, of the radiative transfer based on the LBG approximation, the large velocity velocity. And now, I, I think I have like 10 minutes left, 13 minutes. So, I'm going to give you a brief uh, live uh, demonstration of how shape plus shape mold works. Uh, I apologize because I can't fit the whole screen in the, in, in, in the screen, but uh, I hope everything's okay. Uh, we start with, with just uh, with a quick model uh, consisting of two uh, different uh, shells, concentric shells, bipolar shells. And each one has uh, some parameters, modifiers, like density, temperature, and velocity. Those are the most important ones. I have already uh, defined those uh, to uh, put them things up. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the small uh, panel and let you see how, how easy it's done. Uh, I just uh, open the physics uh, panel and then click on species and add. A molecule, a molecule, molecular species. And then it works this. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is. Let's see. You know that uh, the, the probability that a computer crashes is, is proportional to the number of people looking. This is clearly a confirmation. Yes, I have some 
weak numbers. So I already have these two species. And I also define transitions. I'm going to define this 12CO2 to 1 transition. And name it like this. And I define a, a beam, beam size in acceptance. So this will, this will have three, three acceptance uh, uh, full width and maximum. And basically, what well, is correctly defined. So I just assign in this uh, 3D module, I click on here on the species, and then assign to each of the structures, I assign one of the, of the species I have defined. So it's just 12CO to the inner one, 12CO inner, and then 12CO outer to the other. And then I, I can start rendering it. I just have to go to the to rendering panel. There's a radio tab here. This is the radio tab. I define the minimum and maximum velocity. I'm going to, uh, to model. And then I filter the species. And then I apply the transition I want, which is just the only one which is defined. And then I just click on the shape button. And if everything goes well, in the end I have this here finishes if it finishes. Ah, oh, of course, it crashed. <laughs> we, we have been having uh, memory issues with this. Uh, this is supposed not to work on a Mac for now, but we managed it to, to work, but it's yeah, I, I should say that there's on on the max we haven't solved the problem how to assign sufficient memory memory RAM to for shape to use. It's made in Java, Java and, and there's a background thing that manages the, the memory and uh, that has been solved on Linux and on, on Windows easily but we haven't found out how to control that here permanently so every time we restart it, it assigns a different total memory available to shape and that was too low just But now, now it works, you know, it's uh, just randomly working but well, you see that at the end of the process, it's quite quick uh, you have a uh, you have the, the, the spectral profile, you can define several different units, which is temperature of the main beam, and you can see the profile that given by the radiative transfer of the two shells together. And also, well, this, you can do spectral profiles, which are like uh, to uh, generate synthetic uh, beam profiles, single base observations, but you can also uh, do maps will be very useful for uh, for Alma, for example. I'll open it. I have it already. This is supposed to be ready. Here I have defined an additional transition, which I called 12 0 equal to Alma, no? uh, with, uh, with a given uh, beam, beam uh, size and orientation. And I just have to, to click on this to select the transition, click on the button, and, and then in principle it should give us a map with contours which we can expect. It's about to finish.
with the new map on, on that transition. And then it, uh, it makes modeling uh, quite quite easy, in my, in my opinion. That's why I'm quite enthusiastic about it. And well, basically that's, uh, that's it. Uh, there's a poster on, on Shape Mall, which will, will be displayed tomorrow. Santander Garcia collaborators, and I don't know where, where it will be displayed, but tomorrow I'll tell you on Thursday about it. Okay, that's it, thank you very much.